Hello, fourth and fifth graders. Um, we are going to be doing a Romeo Bordeaux portrait on our iPad using Procreate. Hopefully you already watched the video where he talks about his work. Um, he's got a bit of a pop art style to his work. He is one of the most commercial artists. His, his work is on everything. Um, he's done work for Disney. He's got um, his work featured in commercials and all sorts of really great things. Um, but he really started with nothing, and he is from Brazil, and when he started painting, he was finger painting, and he was using found paper like newspaper, um, because he couldn't afford brushes and, and supplies to create his art, but he wanted to create. So he's really interesting, um, and one of the goals of his work is to bring more joy and happiness back into the world. So you can see from that, he uses a lot of bright colors, um, we got a lot of smiling faces, he uses the heart, or the heart with wings, that's kind of one of his signatures in his work and even the clothing and the hair he uses these colorful patterns now um, if you want to create a picture of yourself then you can actually take a picture right in procreate if you want to do a celebrity which he's done many celebrity portraits that's kind of one of his trademarks as well there's a princess diana um, you can see george washington dorothy a lot of really interesting ones um, then you are probably going to want to search for a photo. So as far as looking for photos, um, you need to try and stick with a photo that's like head and shoulders. So something like this one, that's maybe a little bit too much of the body. Um, something like this would be good. Um, also looking at the size of the picture. Whoops. Um, so this one's 1920 by 1080. That's a good size. If it's over 640 by 480, then it should be pretty clear. Um, anything less than that and it's going to look really pixely and it's going to get really hard for you to create the drawing. So make sure you have a decent size. Anything in the thousands is definitely good. Now, I, um, I already have one saved of Trevor Noah, the comedian. So now I'm going to go to Procreate. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a canvas. So um, if I'm in the gallery page here, there's a plus sign. And I'm going to click on that and go down to create custom size. Now, it always defaults to pixels, and pixels is, is just a really tiny dot of color within an image. So we wanted to do inches. And then we're gonna do five by seven, which is kind of a standard print a picture size. And um, hopefully when you guys come back, we'll be able to print these for you. Um, DPI is important too, that's dots per inch. So 300 should be pretty good. That way, you know, if you ever wanna enlarge it, you know, it's not gonna look pixely right away. So DPI 300 and then Five for the width, seven for the height. Make sure inches is selected and click create. Once you've got that open, I would pinch it in and make it smaller so that you can make sure your photo goes over the whole canvas. And then you go to the actions menu. And if you wanna take your own photo or someone at home, you can just take a photo right there. I'm gonna insert a photo and go to uh, recents and then grab the one that I picked. Now, you can see it dropped it in kind of small. So two fingers, you wanna kind of push out, um, struggle in there, there we go. You can move it around with two fingers. You wanna be careful not to do something like this though. That's out of proportion now. If that happens, just press the reset button and start over. So as long as you have two fingers on there, it should be good. And then make sure you can't see any of the white edges of the canvas any longer. And I'm gonna turn off that blue arrow. And now my picture is where I want it. Next step. We don't want to draw on the photo. We're borrowing the photo to kind of get us started. Eventually, it's not going to be part of our picture. So you actually want to go to the layers icon and create a new layer. And then we are going to actually kind of dim down the picture a little bit. And we're going to do that by making sure that we are changing the opacity and just kind of lighten it up. It makes it easier when we're tracing it if it's not like a full color photo that it's a little bit lighter. So. Make sure that opacity, that's the N that I press there. You press the N and then you get that drop down menu for that layer. Now, the layer that you're working on is the one that's highlighted in blue. So if you have this layer selected, even if you have a second layer, this isn't gonna work. You have to make sure you're on layer two when you're doing this. It's very important or else you have to completely start over. All right, so now brush tool that I recommend is under the inking brushes and it's the studio pen. It has like a nice smooth flow to it. Kind of reminds me of Sharpie marker. And then you want your color up here to be set to black. So your job now is to trace the outline of your photo. Now when you're tracing, I would get, I would kind of zoom in. You can see I'm getting real close here. And obviously brush size 
You don't want it to be too big. But you just want to capture as many of the features as you can. So I'm starting kind of small on the eye here. Oh, it looks like I got a dot there. Now, if you need to change something, I always recommend undo before I erase because that's a quick change, okay? Um, but you certainly can use the eraser tool. Just make sure that when you're erasing, it's completely, um, the opacity of it is completely up or it's going to be really difficult when we start dropping color into our picture. So just you want to make sure you trace all the facial features um, like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears. You also need to go around um, the head shape. That's going to be really important too. Um, the hairline, the clothes, all of those things. So I've already got one done where I did that. So I'm going to jump over to that one now. Okay, so here I've traced everything and I've actually gone, you can see, and turned off the photo layer. So once you're done using the photo, turn it off. Make sure you're still working on layer two though. Make sure layer two is selected in blue. All right, so now a couple of things that we want to add are some connecting lines so we can create that shadow area of the face. So um, I could either do it on this side or I could do it on this side. Um, the first line to add is actually the chin. So it comes kind of down and curves like that. The second line to connect is the nose to the lips. And then we have to do a, a line from the nose to the eyebrow. So sometimes it helps to have the picture on for that one because you can kind of see the curve of the nose. So I'm going to get way in here. You need to make sure your lines are touching. If they're not and you're leaving a gap, then when we fill this with color, it's going to be really difficult. So make sure you start on the line. So I'm going to kind of come in, come down, connect there. Okay, and then um, I'll go back and turn the photo off again and make sure I'm still working on layer two. And then also the eyebrow to the side of the head. So I have this whole area over here kind of enclosed. Um, you can add in some of those details. So, um, you know, if you want to do the heart on the face or you want to do like the half circle, you can add those things in. Um, I always see that he divides his hair into different spaces and adds patterns into them. And if you're not sure how to do that, then I would go back and probably look at some of his work again and see how he's done it in some of his examples. Um, so, um, you can add in, you know, I just do kind of a hair texture line across and then in each of these areas I could create a different pattern. So, you know, maybe I do stripes in one, I do like little lines in one, um, I could do polka dots, like that. Okay, so create those patterns. I create patterns in the eyebrows. Um, I saw in another one of his examples of his work, he did a lot of patterns on the bow tie. So I could do something like that where I'm making different patterns here. And then also think about the background. So um, dividing the background into some spaces. If you want a straight line, if you draw across it and then hold at the end without lifting, you can actually make a straight line and then you can kind of angle it the way you want it. Um, so just dividing the background up into, you know, maybe, I don't know, five or six spaces. And then in each of those spaces, thinking, do I want a pattern? Or do I want just a solid color? Stuff like that. So I have an example now where I've done all of that. I'm going to pop forward to that one. <clears throat> okay, so at this stage, you're ready to start dropping in color. And hopefully, all of your drawing is just on one layer. Um, and... You don't see, if you see any like weird white spots in here, then that, the color is not going to show up in that area. So if you were erasing a lot, you might notice that, and that might mean you have to hand color a little bit. But for the most part, you should just be able to drop in the color. So if I were going to start with um, the tuxedo, might as well, I've got black here. I just drag and drop. So you're dragging from the little circle and dropping it into, I don't think I want that there. So I'm going to undo that, dropping it in to here. Okay, now be careful. If you ever bump this slider bar when you are hitting the undo arrow, you might find that certain things don't show up, like when I'm drawing right now. I'm actually not doing anything. There's nothing there because the opacity is all the way down. But it's just one of those weird things that happens that we need to make sure we turn it all the way back up. All right, so um, as far as the face, usually finding something that's like a darker tone for the shadow area. Um, so I'll use that, dropping that in, and then kind of that lighter, uh, lighter tone here, okay? 
Um, something you can do if you want to go back and get the same color. Let's say I want to grab this color here that I did the shadow area with because I want it on his neck. Um, if I, I can't use, if I have a pen, I can't use a pen for this. It has to be finger. Press down with your finger and hold. You let this little circle come up and what you're doing is selecting that color. So now I have that color selected again. And then let's say I want to go back to this one. So I hold there. Now I've got that color selected again. I want this one again. Hold here. Now I've got that one. So um, you can use that. Sometimes when you drop, it doesn't fully kind of fill in. If it's a smaller spot, so you might have to hand fill that and color it in yourself. Um, if you don't have, a, you know, an Apple pencil, you can just use a stylus, and that usually works pretty well. And then you just have to kind of zoom in to get what you need and then zoom back out. So um, you should be working in all the colors. Um, you might have to go back and turn the picture on if you're curious about, like, the color of the eye or the lips or something like that. Um, and then just make sure you're constantly working on layer two and you don't accidentally switch to layer one when you're turning it on and off. So as you can see here, I have a finished one that I did. Um, so I did leave a couple of things white intentionally because in a tuxedo this shirt is white. Um, I was trying to kind of give it this flag experience over here. So you've got like your stars and your stripes um, because of Trevor Noah being a comedian um, for Comedy Central. He talks a lot about the news, talks a lot about America. So um, I thought kind of including that detail would be important. Um, but with other patterns I just kind of chose colors to fill them in. And I even did that bright kind of pattern on the bow tie there. So. Um, when you're all done, then um, you can obviously make more if you want to make more, or if you started with Celebrity, you could try again and do one of yourself, um, but just make sure that they are saved in your gallery. Um, if you want to, you can always select the artwork and click the share button, and then you can hit JPEG and it will actually export it and then you can drop it into your images. So then when you go to your photos, you have it saved there as well. So you can see now I've got my copy of my artwork and my photos as well. So you can do that as well. And then just be ready to kind of turn those things into Mr. Culp and I when you guys return. Have fun.